we've been tricked as men into believing that uh, that that the that the best, the most important quality in a woman is her looks. I'm not saying marry an ugly woman, but I would much rather a woman that is in a, as average looks, but of radiant countenance, of radiant character, than one of these big boob, thick thigh thoughts that have horrible have har horrible attitudes, horrible character. Then they're they're a snake in Barbie's clothing. Yo, Elliot. Okay, my family follows traditional marriage, as in they give me options of girls that they see appropriate, and I choose the one I find the most appropriate. I find that approach most suitable too. Besides beauty, I was wondering which criterion I should follow when selecting a lady to pro propose to as in which qualities shall I consider? Girls here are strong, independent trash. <laughs> and they are all very ambitious. They are westernized, he says. They follow the same mentalities as the girls in your region. Men are toxic and they are all bullshit. Right? And all that bullshit is what he says. They have very similar qualities deprived from the same virtues uh, just a little bit less intense. I find it very ambiguous and skeptical to direct my family towards a particular set of qualities by which they can start looking for, uh, looking for ladies. Please assist. Okay, I got it. I get the gist of what you're saying there, Abdullah. And um, I read your question earlier and I was thinking about it. There's a really good book by St. Um, John Chrysostom called On Marriage and Family that, that I really like. And he has a chapter on how to choose a mate, right? And I thought it was fascinating to hear, you know, a guy from like the 15, 1400s, probably even further, further back, uh, describe what I think most of us already sense. We already kind of like know this, we already kind of feel it, and what that I've pretty much experienced. <laughs> and it goes like this. Number one, you got to choose a woman who has a kind disposition. That's the number one thing. Does she have a kind disposition? Not, and he says, beauty fades, money is spent, but a kind character lasts a lifetime. A nice, and I know this sounds like, uh, you know, vague, but a nice girl someone who's not selfish, someone who is, I don't like, and like you say, you know, these strong independent women, I don't like loud women. I don't like flashy women that want a lot of attention. I'm not interested in these women that want to w walk around and boast, uh, that want to be in charge, that uh, they're really, like you say, they try to act like men, right? You know, they're westernized. You they try to want to be like men. I'm not interested in that. And I know a lot of people will say, oh, you must not be strong in your masculinity because you want a feminine woman. That's basically what they're saying. Uh, you know, did you have a, how they say, uh, you, you, you're, you're not confident in your masculinity if you're afraid of a strong woman. No, I'm just not attracted to strong women. I'm attracted to kind women, women that have, a, a nice disposition, meek, <laughs> right? Mild. A woman who wants to follow my lead. That's the other thing too. I don't want a woman that I have to bump heads with, that I have to struggle with. I'm busy struggling with people out in the business world. I'm busy struggling with weights in the gym. I'm busy, busy struggling, struggling, struggling with everything else. When I come home, I want a woman that I could yield, I could chill with. I can relax with. If I ask her to do something, she doesn't fight with me about it. That doesn't have mood swings. Notice a woman that's up and down in her emotions. One of the things about Colleen that, man, I love so much about her is that she's even, even keel. She's not, she never up and excited and rambunctious and loud. And she's never down. She's never depressed. 
She's just kind. She's just cool. She's just chill. Quiet. I like a quiet woman. And this is what I'm just telling you, you know, to answer your question, if I was in your shoes. I don't want a loud, talkative woman, <laughs> right? I want a woman that wants to be a wife, right? Not a woman that wants to be a career woman who has high ambitions in the world, who wants to save the world. I want her to save our family, have ambitions for being a great mom. How about that? I want a woman that loves children, or loves to have children. My wife loved being pregnant. <laughs> she loved it. She and when she stopped, we stopped having babies. She would she would kind of lament a little bit, but then she would change her mind because we don't want more kids. But then she would say, "Oh, I remember." Or when she sees a pregnant woman, she oh. Or when she sees a baby, she goes oh. And that's a womanly woman. That's a woman that loves being a woman. I want a woman that loves being a woman. I want a woman that's a homemaker. What's more important than a home, a good home, right? I, I, don't, I don't think most men are attracted to a powerful woman in a business suit who's making more, a whole lot of money. That's less attractive. If I want that, I would just be a homosexual. I would just find a, I would strong, find a man that could do that, right? But if I want a woman, I want a woman that's a whole woman. That's a woman in every way. And so that means being a homemaker, right? Cook is one for my father. <laughs> my father loves to say, don't marry a useless woman. That's one of his favorite sayings. Don't marry a useless woman. He watches like some of his, you know, family members. And, you know, we have people that we know and he like, He's got a big mouth. He'll just be like, uh, this guy's marrying a useless woman. Why he, what are you doing with that useless woman, right? Why? Why marry a woman that can't cook, can't take care of the house? Cooking is huge, man. There's a saying that if you want to keep a man, you keep his belly full and his balls empty. Right? And then there's sex too, right? I know you're a virgin and you, you're you probably gonna hold off till you get married. Um, and so maybe this is something that you won't be able to, to vet just yet, but you could probably tell by the character of the woman, uh, is she going to try to manipulate you with sex? Is she gonna hold, hold sex out on you, right? Until you do what she wants you to do. This is how these men become panderers. This is how these men uh, end up crawling behind their wives and they say dumb things like happy wife, happy life, because that's the only way they're gonna get, get sex, have sex. And we should never use sex as a weapon. That's another one. St. John Chrysostom talks about this in his book, but he's really referring to St. Paul in, uh, in Corinthians when he says that you owe your, he says to a woman, you owe your husband, his conjugal rights, which basically means, and he says, your body is no longer your body. When you, when you marry, your body's no longer your body. It's your husband's body. And the same way for men. When men, you, you, you marry, your body's no longer your body. That means don't give your body to somebody else. You owe it to your wife. That's why adultery is so bad. You're giving away something that, does, that belongs, not even to you anymore, belongs to your wife. My body belongs to my wife. My wife's body belongs to me. That's the mystery of becoming one flesh. And so that's important. That's important too. A little, little further down the line though, but number one is character, bro. Homeliness, right? There's a really good book uh, called Biblical Femininity um, by the transformed wife. I forget her name. She used to have a... She used to have an Instagram, but I think they canceled her on Instagram because she she's an old woman, but she's like too toxic, meaning like she didn't go along with the feminist perspective. And so uh, she's got a book that, ha that outlines all the, all the best qualities, all best characters in a woman. And he and she gives biblical reference to it. Um, 
I forget her name, but it's Biblical Femininity is the name of her book. And then she has another book uh, written for women that's called um, Prepare to Be His Helpmate. Prepare to Be His Helpmate. These are like books that, that like maybe you should, if you, before you marry one of these women, make them read it. Like let them read it. Say, hey, look, you know, this is, the, this is kind of what I'm hoping for. This is what I'm expecting for in, in the woman I, that I'm going to spend the rest of my life with. And here's the thing, men. Uh, you know, I'm talking about all this in regard to what I want in a woman, but at the same time, it goes both ways, meaning that we got to be what a woman really needs, right? You can't expect a woman to respect you that way if you're not respectable yourself, right? I think a part of the reason why my wife and I relationship is it works out so well is because I'm everything that she needs me to be. In every which way I fulfill every masculine duty. And so it's easier for her to do that. And it's both ways because she fills all her feminine duties. It's easy for me to want, I want to, I want to fulfill all my masculine duties for her because she's so good at fulfilling all the feminine duties in the home with the children, with the cooking, with the sex, with the kindness. My wife puts me she puts me on a pedestal and I put her on a pedestal as a result and vice versa. We put each other ahead of each other. We put, e I put her ahead of me and she puts herself ahead of herself. She puts me ahead of her. Always thinking about me, always checking in with each other. And so those are the things that I think about in terms of wanting to be with a woman. It, it, We've been tricked as men into believing that uh, that that the that the best, the most important quality in a woman is her looks. I'm not saying marry an ugly woman, but I would much rather a woman that is in a, as average looks, but of radiant countenance, of radiant character, than one of these big boob, thick thigh thoughts that have horrible have har horrible attitudes horrible character then they're they're a snake in barbie's clothing so that's it that's it my dudes that's those that's my ideas on that and i hope that helps man so i agree i think it's really cool <laughs> because i'm kind of a traditionalist too i think it's really cool that your parents you know they they choose i i want to talk about that for a moment that in this the tradition where the parents choose uh who might be a good mate for their son or daughter um and it sounds like you get you know you get the pick of a few you know maybe they give you like five or six choices and like you can marry her you can marry her you can marry her, you can marry her. i think that's a good idea this whole romantic love bs that came about from romeo and juliet never existed before that marriage was about parents setting up their kids with a good, a, not just a, a good person because the parents have more experience with what it takes to have a successful marriage, but also from a good family. Um, I'm not saying that it needs to go back this way. I'm just saying that I recognize the value of it because a lot of times what happens in our Disney world degenerate culture is that people get married because they're in love. And most of the time when people are in love, it's just in lust. If you're, if, you, if you're having sex with a woman and you think you're in love with her, stop having sex and see how quickly that love tur turns away. Stop having sex and see how quickly the fear starts coming up. See how quickly the anger starts coming up. See all the demons rise to the surface because they're not getting satisfied with sex. So this is why waiting to till marriage to have sex is a good idea is the best idea right and sex is sex guys just because you watch a lot of pornography and you see what they do in the porn movies doesn't mean that that's going to give you a satisfying sex life sex is sex sex is sex the only the only thing that would make a sex life bad is if it turns cold meaning that the other partner is just not willing, all right? Your body's not your body. If she wants it, do what you gotta do. <laughs>
right? <laughs> and same thing the other way around. But marrying somebody because you have pornography level sex <laughs> is, is imagination. It's living in the clouds. It's living, it's living in the fake porno world that you've built up in your imagination based on watching all that Pornhub. That's why you got to get away from that stuff. So I know a lot of people are like, oh, how do you know what kind of, you know, woman you want if you haven't had sex with her? Look, as long as you guys are, you both abide by the same traditional values that you give your partner your conjugal rights, you haven't missing, you're not gonna, isn't, I don't think, and, and mind you, I might be the worst person to ask because I haven't had whole sets of whole lot of women. I'm satisfied with my wife. I've been for, for the longest. Um, <laughs> right since high school so i just couldn't imagine i wouldn't desire anything more than that anything more than what i get from my wife right because i'm because i don't watch pornography <laughs> so that's it i'm ranting yeah i think that's pretty cool man i think it's cool that you uh that your parents are choosing some people choose the girl that's kind right there was this movie um called uh, The Bronx Tale. There's a movie called The Bronx Tale. And in that movie, it's this young kid who grows up around uh, a bunch of old gangsters. He's like old gangsters. They're smart guys, but they're, they're gangsters. And one of the old gangsters you know, tells him before he goes out on a date, he says, Collegino. The kid's name is Collegino. <laughs> old Italian kid in Brooklyn or something. Says Collegino, here's how you know if you should marry this woman or not. Well, here's how you know if she's a good woman or not. He says, when you and this this is you can tell how old school this is, but listen, because you'll get the you'll get the gist of it. He says, when you go to the car, you open the door and you let her in her side of the car. Let her in in her side. Close the door, walk around the back, and if you see her lean over to open the door for you, right? Because back then you had to like pop the lock. If she leans over and opens the door for you, that's a good woman. But if she sits there and she's looking in the mirror or like today she's looking at her phone and she's not tending to you or, or, or concerned about you by turning over to open the door, he said, "Don't she doesn't deserve a second date. But you get the principle, right? Principle is, look, you do a little nice for her she do a little nice for you. But if you do a little nice for her and she just worried about herself, gone, done. Yo, it's your bro Elliot Hulse here and I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent sessions with my King Transformation coaching students where among many things, we get together about four or five hours a week where we speak on things related to becoming kings in our lives in fitness, business, and with women. And if you wanna join a like-minded group of men that get together every day to grow stronger in every way during this degenerate age, it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me or one of my teammates will get back to you with the details to see if you qualify to join us. I really hope to see you perhaps at our next live call. Done.